youngest person to run for Robert Ford's open South Carolina Senate seat. And in this edition of Quintus Mosups, I talk one-on-one -on -one with Emmanuel Ferguson. Well, you know, I was checking my email last Friday, mm -hmm. and actually I saw your email come into my, you know, inbox, and I was thinking you beat me to the punch. <laughs> yeah. Because I wanted to interview you. Oh, great, great. Thank you for having me, and thank you for, for agreeing to speak with me. Anytime, anytime. Because yeah. I'm not used to people sending me emails saying, hey, but <laughs> I'm always going to the person. So. Well, I want to be a proactive uh, uh, person, so yes. uh, I heard about your web show. Thank you. Uh, and I've seen a couple clips, and you've interviewed some really good people, one of which is uh, Bobby Crimes. Yes, yes, uh, yes. The coach of the College Charleston basketball team when I was there. So uh, I said, well, this is the guy I need to talk to. Yes, I'm, I'm glad to have you. <laughs> and you know, you have been busy lately with running a campaign and your other job as an attorney at the solicitor's office. Right, I'm a solicitor uh, now at the Ninth Circuit Solicitor's Office. I was a teacher at the Military Magnet Academy. Uh, I used to work as a teacher during the day and go to law school at night. Uh, so I graduated law school early, a semester early, and, and I was fortunate enough to work where we are right now as a clerk really? uh, until I passed the bar exam and I got a job at the solicitor's office. And let, take me back to early, well actually it was late June, when you filed for uh, the seat for, uh, well actually filed to run for Robert Ford's open seat. Um, there are a lot of heavy hitters in this particular race, from Maurice Washington to Martha Rush. Tell me, why did you want to run for this race? Well, I'm from Charleston, and I saw uh, an opportunity to really give back to the community. Um, that seat has been uh, in possession of, of Mr. Ford for a long time, and when he shocked us all and, and decided to resign, uh, I said, well, this is a call uh, to duty, to service, uh, and I really believe that. I think it's uh, my duty to put someone in that seat who understands the area, who's from the area, and who knows what this area needs. And you know, um, um, did, you, did you ever have a moment did, where you actually had some hesitation? Hesitation uh, is different from consideration. Uh, I considered it uh, running for the seat uh, quite often, but when I realized that it was really a call to service, there was no hesitation. Yes. Uh, I knew it, it needed to be done. I knew I had to uh, give the voters an option of someone who's, who's been here, who's invested himself in this community, and who will continue to do so. So no, there was no hesitation, but yes. lots of consideration. That is good to hear. Well, you know, Robert Ford actually spent 20 years as a South Carolina State Senator, and he spent many years on Charleston City Council, and before that, he was actually involved with civil rights. Tell me, how could you describe Robert Ford? Well, Robert Ford is a great community organizer. He made a great name for himself in 69 with that MUSC hospital oh, right. strike. Yes. Um, and at a local level, uh, like as a city councilman or as a community organizer, Mr. Ford had a great impact. Um, over time, I think that uh, his desire to help the community stretched him too thin, and he wasn't able to do everything he wanted to do. Um, I respect Mr. Ford for what he's done and what he's gone through, yes. uh, but I do think there's time for change here, which is why I don't want the voters to only have the option of people who have been around the political system uh, for so long, but to have a nice, fresh option, a fresh local option, like yes. fresh local seafood. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. But Charleston is made up, so have a fresh local option that they can choose uh, instead of uh, someone who may also stretch themselves too thin. And so in the email that you sent me, you said, quote, my show is a great way to show voters and the candidates beyond sound bites and tail responses. Right. Tell me, who is Emmanuel Ferguson? Well, that, before I tell you who I am, that is exactly why I was excited to have your show, because I've watched your show, and you don't have two-minute clips, okay? You've got an in-depth interview. Um, so I'm very happy to answer who Emmanuel Ferguson is. Um, I am one of six siblings, uh, great race here in West Ashley, in a three-bedroom home. Uh, uh, my father worked at a restaurant for the first 19 years of my life, and my mother was a homemaker. Uh, she could do a lot with a little. Uh, uh, we got a lot of our clothing from that thrift store on Rivers Avenue. Uh, uh, we got a lot of our, our meals uh, 
uh, from the Doshers <laughs> and Savannah Holly. <laughs> there in Savannah Holly. Uh, but she did a great, great a lot for us. Um, I grew up in West Ashland. I went to West Ashland High School. It was Middleton when I first started, but turned into West Ashland when I graduated. Uh, I worked at Pizza Hut. Oh, I love Pizza Hut. Yes, so I worked at Pizza Hut there. I became a manager, uh, a shift manager, which was a very proud thing for me to do as a senior in high school. Uh, and then I went on to the College of Charleston. Uh, when, I went, when I got to the College of Charleston, uh, I majored in political science and education. Yes. I realized the value of education oh, yes. and the extreme gift that giving someone an education actually is. So I majored in secondary education and when I graduated from the College of Charleston, I started teaching. I did my student teaching at Burke High School. I did my observations at Stahl High School. And when I graduated, I landed a job at the Military Magnet Academy. Uh, uh, while I was at the Military Magnet Academy, uh, I used... Uh, what was your secret to juggling all the little jobs? Well, dedication and perseverance, you know? Uh, you've got to stay focused on a goal. Uh, everybody wants to be successful. Yes. Um, and everybody wants to be happy. Uh, but if you take a direct path to what you believe is happening, you may realize that that's not really what you really want. So, I can't remember which philosopher says it, but someone, uh, some wise man, says that the best path to happiness is an indirect path. So you go on many different roads to see what will make you most happy. Yes. Uh, so I've been in customer service, I've been in education, I've been in the law, and I took all of those paths um, to happiness. Uh, and I'm very happy with the career choices I've made. And, and I want to give others the opportunity to, to have that, to make those good choices as well. And you touched on this earlier, as you said, you grew up in West Ashley. Mm -hmm with a household of six siblings, as you said. Tell me, how did you stand up? <laughs> I stand up, I stood out, uh, because I made my voice known. Uh, if something wasn't fair as a child, uh, my parents uh, knew about it, and my brothers and sisters knew about it. Um, I was always uh, very vocal when I saw something that I, I didn't like. Okay. Uh, so, my, although my parents, Thought it was a curse then. They they realized it was a blessing now. <laughs> I understand that. And let's talk about West Ashley High School again. You know, I'm thinking that you were probably one of the most popular people on campus. Were you? No, I really wasn't. Um, I wasn't that great of an athlete. Although I did wrestle in high school, which sure. which really uh, was a great experience for me. Okay. Um, and I did. I believe I was a student body president in my senior year. But uh, I really wasn't one of the cool kids because uh, after school I had to go to work. So I didn't have a lot of time for social life. Right. I worked at Pizza Hut in high school, so whenever there was a party being thrown or an event uh, out there, I couldn't make it. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I had to work. work. So yeah. I wasn't the most popular, but I, I, did, uh, I did study and I did have, have a good time in high school. And obviously you took the ACT or the SAT scores in your junior and senior years in high school. Tell me, uh, why was the College of Charleston attractive to you? Well, I was a hard worker. Um, I don't know why the College of Charleston was attracted to me, but I was attracted to the College of Charleston. Uh, one, because it was right here in my city. Yes. Uh, I love Charleston, I really do. Uh, another is it's got a great uh, record for academics, yes. and its education program um, has great accolades. Uh, and, and, and going through that education program, I see why. They, they really trained uh, potential teachers to, to know that classroom and know how to disseminate and, uh, information to the, uh, to the youth. So, yeah, College Charleston is a great school. And speaking of which, who was Emmanuel Ferguson as a college student? Uh, Emmanuel Ferguson as a college student was someone excited uh, to see what was out there in the world. Yes. Um, I took all, um, as many classes as I could in college. Um, I even took ballroom dancing, right? which was Wonderful. I, you know, I, I thought it was great. You know, um, as a student, I, I pledged a fraternity, two fraternities great. actually. I remember Phi Beta Sigma, oh, social fraternity. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> can you put the sign up? I can put the sign up. It goes like this right here. Uh, I can put the sign up. It was great. And I was a member of Alpha Kappa Psi uh, professional business fraternity. Yes. Uh, so I was a member of a professional business fraternity and a social fraternity. 
Uh, and I did, I stayed, uh, continued to work as well. So I was a hard working college student, but I really enjoyed um, learning new things. Sure. Uh, uh, and that was, that was just a wonderful time. And you actually majored in political science and education, as you mentioned. I'm wondering, when did you, let me tell you this, how, when, when, when did the law, a law bug actually bit, bit you? The law bug bit me in second grade. Wow. Okay. <laughs> let me tell you the story, okay? Um, when I was younger, when I was in second grade, I remember this, it was Springfield Elementary School in this James class. We had career day. Uh, where you're supposed to dress up like the person you yes, want to be when you grow up. Right. Well, I wanted to be an attorney. I wanted to be a lawyer. But my mother would not let me dress up as a lawyer because she thought it would get my church suit dirty. Oh. So I had to dress up as a baseball player yeah. because we played baseball uh, as children. Were you good at that? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a very athletic family. My brothers were very good at baseball and my sisters were great at soccer. And I, I just wasn't as coordinated as them. And so I wore my baseball uniform for career day, but I wore, I carried my book bag like it was a briefcase. So I was a sports lawyer uh, in second grade. You were going to think it's funny even then. You were thinking it's funny even then. So, so even I didn't have a suit, I, I, I couldn't stop my, my desire to be an attorney. So. And let's talk about the Charleston Law School. Sure. What was your experience like there? Walk me through that. The Charleston School of Law is a small private school uh, here in Charleston. It's rather new. And uh, I just had an eye-opening experience there. There were so many different types of law and, and so many different uh, areas where you can use a law degree. And my eyes were really open there. Uh, I had a great uh, law students professor, we call it torts. When you sue somebody, we call it a tort. I had a great torts professor, a great uh, insurance professor who were actually the same person. Oh, great. Um, and I, so I got my first A. <laughs> in law school in Taurus, and I'll tell you, uh, you couldn't tell me anything after I got that A. Yes. Uh, I, I thought I was a legal, legal scholar uh, until I, I, I got a C in legal writing. <laughs> and then I, I humbled myself and yes. got back into yes. the book. Um, but uh, uh, Charleston School of Law was a wonderful decision uh, for me to attend, and I, I'm so grateful that they, they decided to open up shop here. And let's talk about you working with seventh graders at Military Magnet while attending law school, as you mentioned. I mean, how difficult or easy was that to juggle both of those jobs? It wasn't easy. Um, it really wasn't. I uh, would prepare my lessons at night uh, and on the weekends, I'd wake up early, say, say a prayer. <laughs> God was good. Yeah, all the time. And, and, and I'd go and teach. And when this day was over, I'd get in my car and I'd go to sleep. I'd take a nap right there in my car. Yeah. Uh, wake up, read the materials that I needed to know for that uh, law school lesson, and then go to class. Wow. And what happens, and that was a very nervous time for me because in law school they do something called the Socratic Method, where they ask you a question, and they ask you why do you believe that, and why is that a good idea? And they keep asking you yes. why. <laughs> they keep asking you why and why and why until you just don't know no anymore. Way. So if you don't read your materials and understand them, you, you, you'll, be in, you'll be in for a hard time in law school. Yes. Um, but that was not easy. Yes. I, it, what a learning experience again. Uh, to see those young minds and to see their desire to do well. Yes. Because the children really do want to succeed in school. They really like school if school will be something that really truly welcomes them. Uh, and, and as a teacher, I, I saw that if we give our students the opportunity to show us what they can do, then they will, they really will show up. And talk to me again about Burke High School because that's where I went to school when you were a student, or a student teacher there. Um, what was it like dealing with those kids? Because obviously they had a lot of, you know, social issues to deal with. Well, teaching at Burke was a good experience as well. And I know I'm saying that a lot, but all of these experiences really just helped mold me to who I am. Charleston really did help me mold, help mold me to who I am today. And when I was a student teacher at Burke, I taught under Miss Tony Taylor Johnson. Yes, she was one of my school. Oh, that's yes. you, a social studies teacher. That's right. That's I, taught, right. I taught history under Miss oh, Johnson. Yeah. She's uh, awesome. She taught me everything I needed to know. She was great. Um, and at that time, I think Mr. Cannon was the vice principal there, and, and not the principal. Um, and, and again, I was, I think I was maybe 22 or 23 
when I was student teaching. Uh, so I was teaching, you know, 17, 18 year olds. Uh, how was nervous was that? I was a little nervous, um, but before I would go into the classroom, I had to, I would remind myself that I need to, I, although I'm 23 or 24, I need to act like I'm 35 or 40 years old. I, although I want to laugh at the jokes that the kids made, you know, maybe make one myself, I've got to remember that they're looking at me as an example. So I did my best to, uh, to, to be that example uh, and show them that with hard work, uh, that they can go to college and that they can one day be up here teaching their community uh, the values that they need just to be successful. Or running for political office. Or running for office. Yeah. Hey, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. Somebody in Burke right now is going to be a great house member, a great senator, a great councilman, a council person, uh, a great mayor, um, a great president. You know, yeah. somebody in Burke High School right now is going to do great things. We just have to give them the opportunity uh, and the tools to, to, to unlock those great things. And from the classroom to really the core room, you're an attorney for the Charleston County Solicitor's Office. Right. You know, there's a lot of ego and politics running around there. Tell me, how do you keep your ego in check? <laughs> That's easy to do, um, working at a Solicitor's Office. There are so many um, grounded attorneys there uh, that the slightest hint of ego goes away when you see what they do on a daily basis. Um, working at the solicitor's office, the attorneys there deal with an aspect of our community um, that many have a tough time dealing with. Uh, we deal with uh, drug addicts, we deal with uh, murderers, we deal with rapists, we deal with people um, who need a hand a helping hand, and we also deal with people who need to be separated from our society. Yeah. Um, and it takes a lot of humility to be able to make a decision and say that this person needs their rights taken away. Um, and that is a decision that does not come lightly for any solicitor, no matter how big their ego is. You know, so when the ego comes into play, um, it's it easily disappears with the opening of a file and reading the story of a person that you've never met and seeing how their actions or the actions of someone else have affected their life. Yes. Describe to me the following one word. Right. Teaching. Rewarding. The law. Necessary. Mount Hawaii Baptist Church. An oasis. Emmanuel Ferguson. Senator. <laughs> that's a great one word. That's a great one word. And you know how to do it. Well, let's talk about family again. For those who don't know your five siblings, can you briefly describe them? Yes, I can. Um, I am number three um, out of six. That's an even number, so I tout that I'm the upper middle child. <laughs> but uh, from top to bottom, my brother Amwarel um, actually got his name from the, the president of Egypt who was assassinated, Amor El Sadat. Right. He was the president of Egypt was assassinated the same day my brother was born. Wow. Uh, so my father um, did something I think is very respectful and did not give him his own name, but gave him the name of some somebody who left the earth the same time my brother entered the earth, um, uh, entered this world. So my and that's my oldest brother Amor. He is um, was in the navy and now he works at a power plant. Once again, he went to the College of Charleston. Yeah. Other than that, my, my older sister, Missy, uh, she also went to the College of Charleston, and she works at a, a, a plant, or not a plant, a, a chemical lab that okay. makes medicine. Great. Uh, then there's myself, and you know who I am. Yes. Then my younger brother, Tony, who was my, who was my rival when we were children, but now he is just a, a friend and a, and a great helper to me now. Uh, he was in the Air Force, or he actually is currently in the Air Force. Wow. Uh, but he did uh, just finish college as well uh, through the Air Force. He went, he went straight to the Air Force after high school, and now he's got um, a college degree. I believe he's working on his master's. That's great. Um, and he's got a, a great family up there in New Jersey where he's stationed. Uh, then comes my brother Al, uh, who is here in Charleston, works over at MUSC, a sterile processing technician. I'm very proud of him. He, he continues to do um, 
great things in his life, and Al is the guy who we call is good at everything. Yes. Okay? Uh, and I mean it. You, you give him a, uh, some drumsticks, and he'll play the drums with no lesson. Wow. You know, you give him a pair of ice skates, he's the LeBron James of, of, of the ice. You yeah. know, he's just good, good. Uh, at everything. Uh, so uh, that's Al. And then finally, my, my youngest sister, Sharice, also yeah. works at Charles River, or, or, or the, the, the plant that my sister works in. Oh, good. Uh, and she's the baby. Uh, she is helping me with my campaign a lot. She does great work, and I'm, and I'm very glad that, uh, that she's around to help me out. And she would be very mad at me if I did not mention our dog, Max, okay? Uh, we Let's have a dog, Max. Max. <laughs> Just want to say, Max is our, our dog. We got him from the uh, ASPCA yes. up there, and he was in very poor health, and he was a very skinny dog when we first got him. Uh, but now he is a 95-pound fit member of the family. Yeah, so I just want to mention Max as well. And which one in the family were really pushing, pushing you actually to run for Senate? All of them. Really? All of them. Even my brother in New Jersey. Wow. Like, he gets, he loves to read the newspaper here in Charleston. He loves to make sure he's up to date on yes. the events in Charleston. And when he resigned, when he found out that uh, our senator resigned, um, he immediately sent me an email saying, "All right, Manuel, it's your time. <laughs> what are you going to file?" Yes. <laughs> Uh, so every single one of them, uh, I think they knew I was going to run uh, uh, right when they heard the news uh, that there was, there was uh, an opportunity for me to do good in the community. So. And I can't let you go without me talking about your future. Obviously you're running for Senate right now, but let's talk about your future. What do you see next for you? Uh, after being in the Senate, my future will remain uh, Charleston-minded. Okay. I really love this community, and I owe everything to Charleston and its people, you know. I always talk about Miss Sylvia. She was a woman who made me a cake before I went to law school so I could have something to eat so I could pay attention. Yes. She made me who I am, you know. I worked at that meeting street, Peggy Wiggly. Oh, yes. And, and the nice ladies there um, who I would help find groceries, they, they tell me how to make something, you know, out of nothing. This is really my area. So what's next for Emmanuel Ferguson, you know, only God knows. But uh, if he lets me have any say, the answer will be a Charleston-minded answer. Okay. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> well, Emmanuel Ferguson, it was so great talking to you. Hey, thank you so much for, uh, you. for speaking with me and taking the time to talk with me. Anytime. All right. <laughs>